here uh, for us is going to make Ansible aware of the hosts that we have created on AWS. So what we've done until now, sorry, um, is that we have created, this is actually wrong, yeah, the facts doesn't belong here. Um, we have created a file that contains a list of hosts that we want to work with Ansible um, that only has local host at the moment. Now, we, since we have a way to automatically create EC2 instances on the cloud, we want to use these instances to, prov to do our provisioning and we would like to work with them uh, in Ansible as well. So this is what we are going to do. Uh, but the problem is that because everything is dynamic, every time you create a new instance, it has a new IP address, et cetera, et cetera. We cannot really add them to the list manually. So we are going to use a feature called dynamic inventory in Ansible. <clears throat> in order to make that work, we are going to change our Ansible configuration file. And we are going to enable that plugin for the uh, dynamic inventory on AWS. And that inventory plugin is called AWS EC2. So you can enable it in your Ansible configuration file. And now we are going to edit our inventory. So remember this folder, my inventory is the folder that was defined as the inventory folder for this project. So in this inventory, we are going to create a new file and it has a specific name that you have to respect, hosts.aws underscore ec2.yaml. And this file is going to be the configuration file for the dynamic inventory plugin. It's a very simple file, it's a YAML file. It specifies that we want to use the AWS EC2 plugin and that we will be looking for EC2 instances in the region US West 2. Uh, you could, you may not select uh, all re uh, the US West 2 regions, uh, you, the US West 2 region, but if you don't select the region, um, the dynamic inventory plugin is going to look for EC2 instances across all regions on AWS, and it's going to take a lot of time. Uh, so now that you have done that, you should simply be able to run your um, inventory again using Ansible inventory dash dash graph. And this time you have a very different um, situation going on. You not only have this local host that you created manually, but you also have a new group called AWS EC2, which is basically the output of your dynamic inventory on AWS. And here you have one instance with its public IP address that you can um, work with in Ansible. So we're going to check that. We're going to use Ansible minus mping. And instead of pinging the local host, like we've done before, we're going to ping the group on AWS. If everything went fine, um, we should, well, it did not, uh, we should have a pong answer. So here uh, we have this thing that I forgot to set up in Ansible, but I did set it up in SSH in other um, labs. When you connect to a virtual machine that you have not connected before, your um, SSH client is going to tell you that this is a new machine and it's going to ask you for confirmation. This is really not uh, good for us. So we are going to set up Ansible to make it ignore these warnings. So there are all kinds of ways um, to change the way um, this is uh, going. The easiest way is to use a um, configuration file for the group. AWS EC2, which is in our inventory. So here we have the AWS EC2 group. So what we want is we want to tell Ansible that for this group, we want to change the SSH parameters that um, we are using 
to connect to the instance. So this is done in the inventory folder. So at the moment, your inventory folder is just a folder and nothing else with files in it. Now we are going to create new, a new directory structure in order to be able to automatically assign settings based on groups. So we want to change the way we connect to instances in the AWS EC2 groups. So in order for that to happen, we need to be in our inventory folder. And because we want to change things that are related to groups, they are actually called group variables in Ansible, we are going to create a folder called group vars. And then in that folder, we can create as many files as we have groups. And in these files, we can change settings specific to these groups. So here, um, I'm going to change the settings for the group AWS underscore EC2. That's going to be a YAML file. Um, and here we are going to adjust the SSH options that Ansible needs to use when connecting to the instance. So I need to look them up. I'm just going to pause the recording. All right, found them. Uh, so you want to ignore the host key and you also want to ignore the user non hosts fine. So let's see if that works. So with Ansible, we have Ansible inventory, and then you can go dash dash graph, and you can also use, hmm, nothing is going on here. Do I have, I am not in the correct folder. Let's do it again. Okay, so now I have uh, more information about my inventory. So, and you have all the variables that are being applied to each of your uh, machines. Now you see, that this group, AWS EC2, has one instance. And this instance is using Ansible SSH common args, which um, asks to um, ignore the host key and et cetera, et cetera. So now we can try again and do the Ansible thing. And now you have a problem which is expected. Um, we have a permission denied. The problem is that Ansible doesn't know how to connect to that uh, remote target. And it's going to try and connect with my own username, Team G, because um, that doesn't know what other username it should use. So this is also something you fix in the group variables in your inventory. And here you're going to tell Ansible that you want to use, uh, how do you do that again? Ansible SSH user, I think. Ansible user. I just said you guys. So we're going to use Ubuntu as our SSH user and our is it private key file. And the private key file that we are using is our key ACIT4640 underscore key dot PEM. Your path need to match. So this key needs to have the correct permission, permissions, obviously. And when you're going to run Ansible, the path needs to be adjusted to wherever you are. So here I'm going to run my AWS EC2 playbook and other ones as well. So I will run Ansible from that folder. So this key is in the same folder. So the path matches. Um, okay, so let's try again. In the Ansible inventory, now you see that we are using Ubuntu and this private key file. So now we can try to ping our EC2 instances. And we do have a success, which means, which is very important for uh, the next labs, which means that now we have created this EC2 instance automatically using Ansible and also that it's now recognized in the inventory of Ansible and it's also available for us to run tasks using Ansible. So we'll work on that 
uh, in the following weeks. Uh, but this is going to be a huge improvement.